because everybody knows these, right? Most people know these. Almost no, almost nobody knows these. You know what I mean? And the value of, of controlling it is the entire body becomes like easy to move when I lock that in. Like it's just like rotation becomes just like like you get good at balance, right? How long ago was supposed to ball? 1999. I was laying in bed. What if I cut the ball in half? <gasps> what if I cut the ball in half? Um, yeah. Fast forward, what, 2008? Is that when you figured out 2010. the coil? Well, no, I would say two, 2000. Nah, well, let's put it this way. 2004 is when I started the rope without jumping, mm -hmm. right? Rope flow. And, and where, where did that come from? I invented the BOSU ball and I sold a prototype and then came back to sell more to the strength coach for the New York Knicks. And he said, you have to meet my father, Dean Brittenham, out in San Diego. So I flew out to San Diego, spent a week with Dean Brittenham, who was training the Knicks and a bunch of these guys with a lot of ambidextrous stuff and you know elastics and springy stuff and non-conventional stuff. And you had football background and weights. I had a football so background and weights. Did, were you a little resistant to that? Or did no, you think I it was kind of cool? Very cool. I thought it was very cool because I, I had already like studied speed reading and you know my brain and you know yeah. I could I could do a lot with my brain. So I figured okay well if I can now rotate and move my body now my, I can make that part of my brain even more harmonic. You've always been interested in martial arts? No, not oh, martial arts. No. I've always been interested in, like, football was my passion from, you know, from kid to 22, right, when I stopped playing football. Um, martial arts, I took an interest when I was 26 years old, and I literally said to myself, ah, wish I'd started when I was nine. Mm -hmm. ah, well, I'll never do that. <laughs> that ship has sailed. Right. Because the classes I was going to were poorly taught. But you've always been into movement. Always been into movement. How the coil come about? The coil came about well. The rope. I was. I had just been separated. <laughs> the rope set the stage for it. I was just separated. I moved to this estate on the top of a big hill in San Diego, acre and a half. Nobody could see me. I'd spend four days just in my underwear. I was doing about two grand of THC a week, and. I would literally like walk eight steps around a circle, right? I would be doing this change without change. So I would change in your underwear. In my underwear <laughs> with little mint sniffers things in here like this with this a great, you got all weird. With a bag of volcano. Uh, you know, I was crazy. And what happens is if you're gonna cut that, you drill down, you drill down, you drill down, and what do I got right here? That's a coil, right? And so I figured out that, and I played the push hands, as you know. Mm -hmm. And when I understood, like, oh, I can like you use a lot of leverage. And I strength. can I can use verticality in my rotation, where most people think rotations here. Right. I can loop you. So I became so much more proficient at not getting pushed around. Where, how where'd you how do you notice that in people's run in people's gait? I've been studying gait videos for. Like the big joke in the office is that, you know, if I have my computer in my bed at 11 o'clock laying there. We know what you're doing. I'm watching running videos and I actually have. Just right. like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> going to SprintHub.com. <laughs> <laughs> one last, like, you're one like, last final sprint before I go to bed. You're like running days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been studying that yeah. my whole life. <laughs> but I would say that... From the locomotive function, I spent my entire high school career trying to run my fastest 40 and dunk. Like that's what I was could obsessed you, could you about. Run a good 40, could you dunk? I ran a 4.6. Nice. And I could dunk a volleyball. Yeah, I was gonna say softball, but volleyball, that's yeah, good. Yeah, volleyball, <laughs> you know. And then it, you know, gets smaller and smaller every year. <laughs> huh. So I think the gait and the locomotion, I had spent so much time studying how to get faster and then running track in college yeah. right without instruction right you nobody ever taught you how to run it's platitudes and cheek to cheek okay <laughs> brace yourself um I, I think it just came from 
that coiling understanding and then making just recognizing the fact that like holy it's counterintuitive but i'm much more fast and powerful if i can be perfectly balanced at land so it's three things there's the land the load the launch so i'm accepting receiving right then it spikes at some point right and then it launches off that's and where i would say it's super clear on your system especially when you talk about head over foot yes and my experience with jogging and running which is not a lot but so far in my experience has been really helpful because i can practice the head over foot yes it's super easy to do there's not a hundred steps it's right right it's just the head yes. goes over the foot with each uh run and people keep asking me how are you avoiding shin splints how is it that your knees don't hurt i would say it's balance yeah i mean because if my body has to compensate because i'm in a non-sustainable position there's stuff that's working that shouldn't have to work right it's helped me loosen up a lot and that's it. even beyond just the running yes I can even hear music differently than I was oh. able to hear before because my whole body is loosened up. Wow! You see, when when we <laughs> it's met, it's getting weird. It's yeah. getting weird. Well, when we met, I'm gonna be in my underwear any second. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready. Um, when 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 I met Mark, I knew like I knew prior to even meeting him, and that's why I was so excited that he would be a catalytic individual for the expansion of this knowledge all over the world. Like I just. I knew that, and I said to him, I said, you're a big dog, and you're gonna be a big cat. And we, that's hard to do. And when you're a big cat, everybody around is gonna see that, and they'll be like, what did he do? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's true, that's true. You're turning into a big cat, and that video you posted the same side? <laughs> Chris is like, we're calling each other up. <laughs> it's like, I was like, Chris, it's not mini Chris, it's Biggie Chris. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people went nuts over that. It was great. Yeah. Because you were having fun. That's another thing right. is that for an athlete, most athletes. I had a lot of people uh, DM me. And oh, they're really? like, they're like, hey, I know you're like having fun, but like, was that real? <laughs> and I'm like, it is actually real. Like, try it when you're running. It. It's hilarious. It's so I just love it. <laughs> it is helpful. Yes. It's, it's super helpful. Styles make flight. Right, we did a video with Graham talking about okay, this is very useful cornering because same side stride keeps you on the inside. Oh, gee, golly, right? Physics works. Okay, you know, if I'm running that way and I'm coming here, well, it's fun too. It, there you go. You know, okay. some people like I, I'm starting to enjoy running a lot and I'm going yes. pretty far. Yeah, yeah. You run for two or three hours, why not mix it up? Just try a little something well, different when you're going. Well, this is how I think it is. For athletes who play with a ball, running is punishment. You're horsing around, you're, you're nine years old, you're horsing around, go put your glove down and run three laps. Yeah. You know, and if you don't stop horsing around, we'll make you run three more. Right. It's a punishment. Yeah. Athletes hate running. Stop messing around, go over there and do three sets of bench. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, I that. you'd be like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna get in trouble all the well, time. Apparently, apparently the New York Giants, and I think this was like the season before, in a preseason, something bad happened. Like they hit the quarterback, they got in a big fight, and the coach was new, and he was just like, that's it. I'm treating you like high school boys. Get on the goal line and run. And he just ran hundreds back and forth until they started collapsing. Oh, shit. Because he's like, you guys, are you serious? You're going to get in a fucking riot on a football field? Right. You're professional. Yeah, I'm the coach, right? Right. And you can't do that to pro guys. But if they screwed up that bad, and the punishment was like Vince Lombardi, run and don't stop and like walking up down. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's amazing. It just gets you tired, right? Because when you're tired is when you'll listen. <laughs> you know, you oh, he made the point. Holy shit. How'd you find this guy? How'd you find Chris? Oh, I got lucky. Um, we had a mutual friend who introduced us. Chris, you know, come on over to the lab and, you know, 11 o'clock on Thursday, mm -hmm. right? And he came in and I showed him the Royal Coil as it, you know, sort of like, you know, this, this move where we're like coiling it mm -hmm. on that. I taught him that move. I told him the importance of how you engage that engine. He left and then he did a 40 pound PR bent press on a weight that he was struggling with for a few weeks. Like, I can't get it, I can't get it. I taught him the coil, whoop, right up. And so he was back 
you know, yeah. next day he was bought in. He was bought in. He's like, wait a minute, I just got 40 pounds stronger. Really? Mm. Right. And then the next thing I taught him was the ropes. And he he went back and he spent six hours a day just putting in his body. Two weeks later, he knew the ropes and it was in him. Yeah. And I was like, this guy loves it. If anyone who likes to eat my cooking, I'm gonna feed you, right? Just feed you. And he just was like eating, right? And so we recognized after a time that like, holy shit, like your skill set and my skill set match up well. They match up perfectly, yeah. right? So, and he, ice runs through his veins he cares about his family his work and nothing is fucking ice in his veins right he's just like he's doing his shit and get the hell out of my way because i don't care right why and, do you think uh why do you think people like uh like the coach here for the keep cleveland cavaliers why do you think they're attracted to weck method what what do you guys think what do you think maybe you're offering you and Chris are offering now uh, that maybe is a little different than what you might see from other professionals. Well, I think the fact that I've been an outlier for 20 years, sort of like no deliverables do. I could go explore from here, there, elsewhere. So you and, and I talked about that. Having a little bit of financial freedom can go a fine. long way. A lot of financial freedom can go a longer way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're not worried or concerned about the month, yeah. and you can sort of chart out months on a calendar, there's like a burden. The, the most terrifying thing for me is like, I don't have any money. I can't support the people I love. Right. Like I'll go dig holes so they can eat food. You know what I mean? So I don't want to go dig holes. So I'd be upset if I had to go dig holes and <laughs> they wouldn't get as nice stuff either. Right. So I think with being an outlier like that, where Athletic inadequacy, so I'm so motivated to beat the better man because he'll beat me. So how do I beat him? I got to do something that gives me an edge, right? So I've always looked at it that way. And I'm a good enough athlete that I feel well, I know something. Like if there's something there, oh shit. Like I'm like the fucking hound. I smell the pot in the car. It's in the car. I know it's in the car. It's there in the car, right? So I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh wow, this is a big insight. And then it, ha it has been strategic in the sense that when I invented the BOSU ball, I said to myself, I want to be the world's foremost expert on the subject of balance measured by locomotion. And it's that little uh, qualification at the end that gives it the empiricism and the objectivity and the universality that it's fucking game. Measure my understanding of balance by fucking how fast can you get from here to there. And then there, 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 I don't care. But it's how I've got the objective reality that is a lighthouse on shore. So if I'm not getting faster, well, you better adjust. And you guys are showing people stuff and you're not really trying to change their program necessarily. Well, what, you're what giving we've them done, ideas, well, right? Well, the brilliant thing that Chris has done is he has taken WEC method and he has methodized it. So we have a way of classifying and categorizing movement. So we have a coiling core, a coiling core, and then the rotational movement of black back and forth. So you optimize one side. One side gets as compacted and, sp and ready to mm, spring out as possible, and the other side is as long as possible. And now I've optimized that, that side. That might take a little time. Yeah, well, it's... Buy-in is a big part of it. Yeah, it takes a couple weeks. Right? Well, buy-in is also a big part. If yeah. you come in excited because, yeah. holy shit, this thing is real and it's happening, which is thanks to you and yeah. others, this is what's happening, you can learn it pretty damn quick. Yeah. But if it's like, oh, you want to show me something, all right, what do you want to show me? All right, I, I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to do lat pull downs. Got 30 you, seconds. Yeah, exactly, right? If your ears are closed, it's take you a long time. But that optimization of this, when I'm here, I've taken that spinal engine and I've made that side so compacted that it's like the leverage I have over the extremities is just... There's a lot of leverage and strength in what he's doing right there. And I know sometimes some of the guys that are watching this might not understand what the hell we're talking about. Yeah, but I'm he can throw a bomb from this side. He could throw a really strong left hook from this side. Yeah, he I could throw a football really far, maybe not with his left, but... You can, that, this is how you build power. This is how you build and generate strength as it pertains to sport. So maybe it, maybe this is not necessarily a powerlifting 
we can't really do this on a bench press necessarily. Here's what I would say to the power to the power lifter out there. Think about the millimeters that matter and the millimeters that you're missing, right? So if you're always bilateral, right? Always bilateral. You try going unilateral and you optimize unilateral, and then you optimize the other side. I would now say, pack it, right? I would say a lot of power lifters would have trouble letting do that rotation again. So some lifters might not have an issue with getting this side down and flexing the lat. They probably understand that. But to get this other shoulder up real high and get this length in here, mm. this would be something I would be a huge advocate of, of you at least exploring because having that mobility well, and being able to move like that is going to save you. Like a lot of times we get hurt it's not good, in the gym. I, I think it's also going to make you outside. stronger. It is. I think it so. Is. You're going to pack it deeper. You're going to be more athletic. Think of a half a millimeter what that does to your squat. One okay. half say, of one say millimeter. Say it again, you're going to be able to do what? Pack it in more when you're you, showing yes, squat. Yes, if I, if I have the unilateral yeah. where I know how to pack that yeah, lat all good. the way down to the lumbar dorsal fascia, there's yeah. no slack, and I got the other side. Remember Ed Cohn, the way he'd pack into his squats. Yeah. Very well, similar. And even I Ed do. was more jacked. I, yeah, right. <laughs> hey, Ed. <laughs> Hats off. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do on the back squat, is I take my pinky finger right here and I wedge the bar right there like that. And so that yeah. pinky triangle, I use that to jam these down and I can right. do a lower a lower on my back and I can use that to like drive the elbows to the sacrum here. Yeah. And so I, I would also run. say for lifters, we tend to get hurt as soon as we get a little bit out of position on a squat, on a deadlift in particular. And when you have more mobility and when you have better athleticism, you're going to notice that when you do get thrown out of these positions, you're not going to get hurt the same way. And if you do get hurt, the recovery is going to be a lot faster. Yeah, these are all factors. Absolutely. And I love the fact that you are bringing it back to just the basics of, you know, run. Yeah. And I love the definition of run is just faster than walking. Yeah. <laughs> right? Something that somebody from the other side of the street would be like, yeah, yeah that, guy's, that guy's running. Well, even if even Got if it. that person across the street going, hey, ain't running. Like, I mean, even if you <laughs> literally did, just like you said, 10 feet, yeah. then walk, 10 feet. There's something about it that like, if you want to eat tonight, being a better runner mm -hmm. is a foundation for that. Yeah. And psychologically, like, I think, there, I think, I think, frankly, you're sexier if you have that fluidity, right? Then if you're sort of like, you know, coming in and, you know, you're you're bound up, you know. Yeah. Like you come in, you know, the dance floor. You can't, can't turn your head. You gotta be like, yeah, hey, what's right. up, everybody? How you guys doing today? Right. You gotta turn everybody like right. this. Yeah, like that's only cool if your traps are so big that you can't turn your head. <laughs> that's funny. Awesome having you here, and uh, uh, great job on the podcast. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was, that was a great podcast. How long was it? Oh, we went. That was going. Yeah, we went. Yeah, yeah. That was great. Everybody had something to bring to it that was really, you know, a cogent point. And not, you know, I learned some things yeah. in there, you know? We could have kept going forever. Oh, I know. Well, uh, you got your due at some point, come down to the lab for sure. I have to, yeah. Um, but I think what we're going to try and do is we're going to try to make this more frequent. Good. You know what I'm saying? That would be great. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's it's been a long, long journey. But again, it's been strategic. Like, you know, I got a pile of patents and a bunch of products that, you know, my objective is that my training tools and my methods just represents a box that one must check if you're to optimize yourself. So you got this big toolbox and there's just a WEC check, right? There's just a WEC check, right? And there's going to be some things that you got to check in the WEC box. Otherwise, you're not going to be optimized, right? And that means universal, ubiquitous. And that means every step stronger for everyone. Because when the cool kids in the class do because they know and they believe and they like, well, then that encourages and gives permission to everybody to do it. And big dogs that become big cats, oh, really? Not easy What's to that do. What's name? The mobility guy up in San Francisco. He wrote some book, uh, Mobility... Uh, Let's see, uh, Supple Leopard guy. Oh, uh, yeah. That guy is Kelly something. Star. Slater. Star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kelly Sturette's a huge fan. I know Sturette has been messing around with the rope. The I think ropes. his daughter's messing around with the rope. Yes, and stuff well, like that. what I love, like, Kelly Sturette, 
scalability and pragmatism, right? Yeah. The, like, how are we gonna actually do this? Ropes? Are you kidding me? We had a, a coach come to a qualification, had a stepdaughter in Guam, okay? She's on a playground. They find a piece of rope, and she's teaching the other kids the dragon oh, roll, nice. right? It's a free piece of rope you find in the playground. You're teaching them a move. And the other thing that's cool about rope flow is once you get over the sort of the fear of, oh, I'm gonna look stupid, yeah. I'm gonna hit myself, right? It's inviting to everybody because you don't jump if you don't want, right? You don't have to mess with it. Yeah. You don't have to jump, there's no impact. And you have to rotate. So if you have to rotate and you can aggregate a thousand reps in no time, the muscle memory builds pretty quick. Right? And what I would do is like when I'm not in the mood, I would take the rope and again, just like find like the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat. And within a five minute period, I could take that sort of lethargy and sort of like, oh God, top webs, right? And then you're excited again, work out. Yeah, and I feel juiced and just like, okay, right? And there's something, there's also something interesting is that spiral dynamic, right? The Kundalini. Like, I went deep into the outer realms of the universe. Like, so I was out, right? And I was tapping into sort of that, like, that, like, serpent, right? And, like, having weird dreams and, like, you know, meditating like, like this for hours like you know and i'm packing the chi into my bones you know so all that all that like internal work helped me find new discoveries because now i had such an, an accurate map of internal that i could feel like i could feel subtlety and nuance which in the game of push hands is everything. Because if you push on me and I make it disappear a tiny bit, you're not pushing me. Right. And now you're, I get the opportunity to push you. And I love that game. It's so much fun. Because if I play the bigger, stronger, faster game, then I lose. Right. Every single time. <laughs> right? So if you're not big, you're not fast, you're not strong, <laughs> what choice do you have? <laughs> not many. <laughs> Well, you have you have the choice, or you have the, the the opportunity to figure out an advantage, something different, right? And if I were competitive, I wouldn't tell anybody nothing. Right. I'd wait till after, you know. Okay. If I found the new steroid that you know made you ten inches taller, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exploit it for the opportunity at hand, mm -hmm. and then you share the wealth. <laughs> but since I'm <laughs> after you made it already, since I'm no one, <laughs> never gonna set a world record. Well, the best thing I can do is give it to the guys and girls who will. All right. <laughs> it's funny. There you go, everybody. David Weck at Super Training Gym. Strength is never a weakness, weakness never a strength. Catch you guys later.